hello everyone welcome to the channel uh celestial farm girl here um thank you guys for all your welcome uh, <laughs> for your comments for your subscribes the new subscribers your likes your shares um i really appreciate you supporting the channel and supporting the power of the holy spirit you know, the difference between the Holy Spirit and other spirits is the Holy Spirit isn't so flamboyant. You know, it's not like out in your face and, uh, uh, you know, to thrill you or anything like that. Because the Holy Spirit is all about learning about peace, right? Peace and love and uh, to find the best of who you are within yourself and, uh, you know, things like that and so you know it, it's not really loud it's more uh it's a, it's a kind of a strong voice that comes from within it's a quiet voice but it's a strong voice and sometimes we have to be quiet to hear it you know we gotta quiet down to hear that voice and isn't that just the, one of the most difficult things to do even for one minute a day to sit down in a chair and just breathe until you quiet your mind and it doesn't move but it is good for us because it teaches us power over the mind and just one minute a day of practicing that can give you a whole lot of strength over observing what you're thinking as well and it's really a great practice to do for one minute before you do your chakras you know just to clear your mind of everything and make it go empty and do it for one minute and in doing that you are practicing to control your mind wonderful huh i mean you know and eventually you'll think what you want to think and you'll feel what you want to feel because your mind affects the waters. The air always blows on the waters. And so how you think will be how you feel. And to get that mind under control, you got to show it who's boss. Your heart's the boss, not your mind. And your heart will want it to be still maybe for a minute so that your heart can talk to you and get a word in edgewise. <laughs> I don't know where that come from. But somebody may have needed to hear that. I just want to say I love you guys. Thank you. And here we go. We're going to do it with the divine creator. You get to see it first. Oh, mama, empress. Wow. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and turn over Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine because the, it gets cut. And I just want you to know. Two of Cups collaborating. Cancer. Venus and Cancer. Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty awesome for the Divine Masculine side. And this includes us too because we have a Divine Masculine too. Holy Spirit wanted me to let you know that source. Do not forget of your own Divine Masculine. Okay? And then we're going to cut the cards again and we're going to do the Divine Feminine. Uh-oh. Okay, we've got Saturn and Sagittarius. Um, and it's Overload taking on too many burdens and we will definitely talk about that when we get to that divine feminine okay so we're going to set these cards right here and creator is in emperor empress status so this is obviously from the mother divine so we're going to take the Gaia dreams deck uh, and see what mother holy spirit you know, Empress of Heaven and Earth, or they would call her Queen of Heaven and Earth. We've heard of her. She hasn't been around for a long time. Uh, she may have got wiped out during Moses' days. I'm not sure. But it does look like that was right around the time when the love of the Divine Feminine started dying. 
and we became more like a an object, like a cow, you know. How many of us could you have in one herd? And, you know, we were used to make babies and things like that. And I don't want to bring these things up to make us feel bad because we need to see how far we have come in overcoming today. We only started voting like 50 years ago before they let us vote. Come on, we ain't that long of coming out of that damn dark stall we got locked into. And um, we got Mother Earth there in her shaman state. And we got the Father there. And the Father of Truth knows what's true. You know, something came. This is a natural father of nature. I would call this Father Nature. And there is a natural father of nature. You know, when I think about it, the, the male species in nature is nothing like the male species of the human. The human male and female species act more like um, monkeys, chimpanzees. I mean, kind of in a way, we do. We got a lot of them, you know, the, the, there's a lot of tendencies for a lot of chaos and upset sometimes with some males who are still acting out of unhealed trauma, right? Right. And so I believe Mother Earth is here at this time to... The Divine Feminine is to take back a handle on the nest. You know, before Cain and Abel, you know, Cain was the... Uh, let's go back to Cain and Abel, the first argument between the first two brothers. Now, Cain was obviously female because she did the planting and the harvesting and brought food you know, and put it before God, and um, ones was appreciated more. Abel was the uh, herdsman, and he brought meat before God. And so God, at that time, whoever this God was, was a worldly God, and he loved meat more than he did, according to the legend, fruits and vegetables. And according to the legend, I see, Cain was upset and slew Abel because of it, right? Now, that just don't make a whole lot of sense to me. I, I felt like, you know, I like to listen and look at the root words, and we've got a bull, a bull, and Cain, which if you take out the vowel, which they had none back then, no vowels yet, it would have been can. So Abel and can, A-B-L, would have been the name. Um, Abel and can. So um, what what is it that made me think, oh, yeah, that Abel was also, I would say, jealous of Cain or can, because of the fact that he was born a man. And I think that that meant that he was born to be a human. Because at this point, we may have been dealing with aliens who had taken the DNA of uh, the caveman and maybe worked that into Cro-Magnum. We have here Six of Pentacles. This is a card of give and take. Which, if what I just said was the case, then they had given their DNA to upgrade man, and they used this while they were here to help them build the world as slaves. So it was a give and take situation.
a give and take situation. And we can see that this is much more than just a human. Now, how they got here, we don't know. Maybe they, they couldn't get back to their place. But it is said in some of the ancient legends that they could make it through portals from this world to that world. That means that they had to have had the ability to harness galactic power to create wormholes back and forth, of which I have seen a wormhole. So Mother Earth is telling us the story and the history of this planet that we are both alien and human and animal. We are animals. We are the human animal because we are created from the dust of the earth, meaning evolution up till the caveman. And then from the caveman in the Garden of Eden, we were had other DNA mixed into our lives and we became a new man. At something new. That had better survival skills, obviously, because the Neanderthals or the caveman kind of just like went away. Of which I have read that there's probably been a, a lot of human species who have literally um, went extinct. And they found them all over the world, bones of humans that are not like we are, uh, very much different. And so, but the DNA of all those things are in us. Mother Earth was a planet capable of, of evolving in such a way that was capable of creating and supporting life. Now that's, that's, that's amazing. That's like, well, that's a mother, right? We are capable with a seed and we can turn a seed that comes into us into a child, right? Give us a few months, out pop a baby. <laughs> And we take that for granted. We just take it like, you know, that's what we know. So we do know that Mother Earth in the beginning before she formed was hit with another planet called Thea. Yeah. And these two planets combined made the explosion of the moon. And of course, this is before anything existed on this planet other than elements, right? So, you know, one could have been male, one could have been female. Maybe planets don't matter if they come together like that. You know, something new was created, the moon. Huh. duality one was light one was dark or one was red one was yellow i love the red right now we are in sagittarius season and mars and the sun are conjunct with poseidon maybe or uh, what's the other name for poseidon and they're using it is it neptune Neptune, this is crazy. That's awesome. Yes, yes. The sun and the moon are facing, or the sun and Mars are facing off together and will be for a couple more days. Um, which, that's a lot of energy there. Can you imagine, right? The god of war and the god of life or the god of fire. What it would be the sun, the light, the god of light, of course, of course, the light. But red can bring light too. 
So uh, that might be a warning for everybody to watch your tempers. We all might be in a, you know, so balanced. Make sure you do your one minute of breathing, clearing your mind, setting your focus on what you would like to complete through the day. Remember, you have a duality. It's all, you know, blending together. Just after the holiday seasons, today's Black Friday. Everybody's probably out shopping. Make sure you get plenty of rest in the next day or two to make up for all that energy you spent so you don't get depleted. Destiny. It is our destiny on this planet. To understand life, to be a part of life, and to know who we are. That's God just told me that. God wants you to know who you are, the power that you have in you from eight million years of life within this solar system. Yes, our DNA could be somewhat young. But yet at the same time, our DNA is compiled over eight point some odd million years throughout this universe. And we were blessed 50,000 years ago to have aliens come here and switch us up from being ape men or cave men um, and evolved us in 50,000 years what took 8.6 billion years for the Mother Earth to create. So therefore, we jumped. Like, our timeline jumped. Like, like we jumped big time. And then as the years progressed, aliens were probably sent in to spread us out, to bring new discoveries, to bring new technologies, to help us as we evolve while their DNA was awakening within us. So, you know, either either Adam or Eve, which that's what this would look like. This looks like the evening sun. This looks like the morning sun. Adam and Eve. But it is our destiny to know who we are and what we have in us and what we're created from. And uh, Mother Earth, Mother of Heaven and Earth, Mother Creator, the universe, you know, the Gal XYZ, the galaxy, even says that Mother, the Gal, the old Gal, the counselor. I'm going to read from this one what God would have us to hear. That's a 12 of waters. Waters are about emotions. Always about those emotions. 12 of water, the counselor. Empathetic. God says, be empathetic, wise, objective advice, trustworthy, emotional understanding, clarity, sharing. God's kind of funny, sharing. I'm sharing and God is sharing this with you. Look beyond the words to the emotions. How did it make you feel? Listen, listen here. Seek objective counsel, an emotionally complex situation, an opportunity for understanding. Be receptive, not rejecting. Our feelings preventing a resolution. And on the negative, it could be that you may be feeling a lack of empathy or mixed or confused emotion. 
The counselor of water represents one who stands high, an elder advisor or wise man or woman, whom the queen or king calls upon to discuss their feelings regarding a situation or experience of concern. She or he is someone who is trusted. They are a caring, compassionate person who will listen attentively, only interrupting the flow to ask a question if there is need. So, yeah, this is a story that needs to be told that mankind, you know, needs to know and understand, and they will understand themselves better why they're violent. And I'm talking women, men, why they're violent, why we um, can go to extremes sometimes and want to kill and murder and maim. It's because there's an animal nature in us, but we also have a higher level nature. We can also be an empress. We can also be, you know, take on the traits and initiate into ourselves the good things of life, which is truth and honor and dignity with oneself and who oneself is. And it transforms out of the animal nature into the godlike nature of our, of our ancestors. The godlike nature is what we are looking for. We are looking to be, you know, and then before you know it, you're understanding things that you never knew before, and life becomes very, very magical. Because the Holy Spirit will share those things with you when you take that minute to slow down and shut your brain out and close everything out of it so that the Holy Spirit can allow new things into it. And that's why we want to take a minute and breathe and not allow any thoughts to come in my mind into my mind I do that but I do that so that I can give God a minute to download spiritual knowledge into my mind which I use I can use it to my to the good of my life right yeah that's faith have faith it might not happen on the first time. You might have to do it a month. God will test and try us to see where our heart is. Are we true? Do we really want to do this? Is this something we can uh, hold on to, accept, and move through? So give yourself a little time to be tested. More emotions. Give yourself time to feel your emotions as well. You know, unfortunately, this message here is for somebody who has suffered loss, betrayal, and you're feeling really, you know, sad and remorseful. Uh, the first thing you want to tell yourself is, if I'd have known better, I'd have done better. So I forgive myself for anything that I feel was my fault, anything I feel shame for, anything I feel guilt for. And the most important thing is that you want to work towards lifting your heart and soul back up. And we always can start over any time, any day that we choose after we have went through a grieving period. This is grief, distress. There's no comfort. The loss of someone you loved, it's something that I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. Took me two years. I'm only now coming out the other side, but let me tell you, I did not waste any time while I was uh, doing my grieving. I wrote, I read, I studied uh, on my own nature 
and how all this kept happening to me. And um, eventually, you know, through meditation, prayer, cleansing, all that sadness out of my energies, um, moving forward, taking up tarot again and making a channel and using it as a creative outlet, healing began. Healing begins when you take action. Dancing, doing my shamanic work, you know, walking through the house, talking to God, the air. The air is alive. It hears you. Talk to it. It'll answer you back. I, I, it will. It may take it a minute, give it time, but I talk to the air, talk to the waters, talk to the planet, talk to the solar system. Yeah, talk to everything. Never alone. <laughs> Queen of Earth. Never alone. Ten Pentacles. That's emotional fulfillment. And for sure, for sure, I am just grateful to be who I am and to make it through what I made it through. And one of these days, you know, I'm going to tell the story. It's quite the story indeed. And here we have it. It's a gift. Mother Earth says your DNA, your your inheritance, your heritage is a gift. You made a multicultural jump in 50,000 years that could have took this planet 100 million years to make. We're 100 million years ahead of our time. Maybe a million. How far? between 500,000 and a million years ahead of our time. Isn't that something? And it has caused much conflict. And we definitely want to be careful and not destroy ourselves and our planet. Well, God says it ain't going to happen. He ain't going to let that happen. This planet is just one of the precious, precious, precious few that has made it to the state. And they will never let that happen. Think about that. You're all exceptional according to the universe for us to have made it to this point in time where we're at, riding approximately a hundred to a million, a hundred thousand to a million years between 500,000 and a million years ahead of our time. We would have had to live in caves. And God says they evaluated that. They wasn't sure we would even make it out of the caves alive. It was a rough life. Children hardly ever survived winter. We were hairless. Hairless monkeys. And we wandered all over. So, you know, that we made it and lived through that bottleneck of extinction where all lots of things went extinct, right? Dinosaurs went extinct. I mean, why, how did man make it? Because we've been watched over. <laughs> The masculine and the feminine made it. And there were spirits here watching over us. There were things that were watching. Life was already here because Mother Earth had already formed and was, you know, creating herself into being what she would be. Divine masculine, divine feminine. Well, that's a very interesting story that God brought to us today. So God wants you to be proud of yourself. God wants you to know you're beloved, that you are a part of this planet and you are a part of creation that this mother planet loves and loves your children and loves you and wants you to be happy with who you are because you're an extremely rare individual. Right? Right. So don't forget to care about yourself. Take one to two minutes a day before you clean your chakras 
and let your brain know who's boss that you'll think what you want to think and you'll learn to focus and you do that by just shutting down one minute and breathing and then you go back again rewound i love you guys have a wonderful day god bless